first, on New Year's Day, it will be 100 years old. Oh, boy. The cars that my railroad had when I grew mm -hmm. up. Oh, everything was steel paneled, yeah. all riveted together. Come on, step inside. Okay. And Thanks. use your cameras. Take plenty of photos. You are standing on a concrete floor. Oh, my. Gives it plenty of strength, plenty of stability, and very heavy. The Pullman cars, when you got on them, you mm. felt like you were on something substantial, mm. not, a, not a bus, but something mm. really heavy, and part of that comes from the concrete foot. Now, you would expect to see passengers coach seats on both sides of the mm. hallway, and that was true when this car was built. But in 1946, the maintenance away department got it and made a tool car. Mm -hmm. Look at all the tools. See yeah. they're all centered yeah. up in the round. Twelve men worked with this car, and this car was assigned to the big steam crane. We have our, it wouldn't fit on our track here. It's on Edwards Road. Oh, I think we saw it with a tank yeah. car. Great, yeah. great, great. The crane is a wonderful tool, but without the men and all the attachments, it really can't do mm -hmm. what we need it to do. And what we needed to do was to clear up a train wreck. Whenever there was a train wreck, this car and the big hook would go out there. Cars that were very slightly damaged would be repaired. The mechanic would work here. He would use all these parts and pieces to fix a car wow. and try to get the wreck site cleared off. The men would come out and they would use their tools to take out broken rail, twisted, mm -hmm. bent up rail. And you can see what rail looks like. That's the high speed main line for FEC right outside us. We're right next to uh -huh. the first train will be by here, I think, about 4.30, 5 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's quite a ways. But maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll come early. If they could, they would use these tools mm -hmm. to repair a car and get it out of the way. If they couldn't, they'd use the big hook and they'd move it off the site. Then they'd repair the rails so they'd get the railroad moving again. That was the most important thing. Now some of the tools are so heavy that we can't actually lift them by hand. We use a device like this. Now we're trolley jack. We can use a come along, which is a chain fall, and hoist mm -hmm. it up and we can swing it around. Notice that everything is latched so yeah. that it won't swing free. A hook on here and once we do it, oh. it'll swing. Well, where's it going to swing? Why would it do that? Because we have a doorway here. This one, I don't know if I can get it. This one's very stiff. I don't think I can get this one open. See, we need a mechanic to work on this project, too. I should try to open the other one. We could pick up a big tool like one of these jacks and swing it around out the door and lower it. And that way our men wouldn't have to pick yeah. the tools up. They could actually do the jobs they were sent out for, right? Wow. How would you like to have to use big claws like this and hammers like this. Big tool Look at the size of these hammers. Wow. Pretty okay. big size. Now the steam crane, the steam powered crane was a, was a really good thing, a great labor, labor saver too. Notice this thing that looks like a, looks like an ice tom. Mm -hmm. There's points on it. It wasn't for ice, that'd be a big block of ice, mm -hmm. but for wood. Bridge timbers or sleepers. Notice that all the ties, mm -hmm. the cross ties underneath the wood, the tighter that you pull on this handle, the tighter you lift up, is the tighter that the points dig in. So we can lift all our bridge timbers and all our cross ties with this device mm -hmm. in our crane. This one looks different. It still has the two handles, but notice instead of points, it has a funny shape, a square shape. This actually fits over the ball of the rail, the head of the rail itself, and we can lift an entire length of rail. A 39 uh, foot uh, piece of rail weighs 1,200 pounds. It's a lot of lift and let our crane do that. And this is the device. See, we talked about the crane needs all these pieces and parts to do the work. These are all rail jacks. Very necessary to lift the rail up off the sleepers so the sleepers can be pulled out for normal uh, maintenance. All the tools that the men use, if the rail's turned over, they would use tools like this to set them back up. I guess you got tired after you worked all day on this railroad. Yeah. We talked about tools that are so heavy that you can't even pick them up. You have to use another one of those mm -hmm. trolleys. Maybe I can just do it. And it would just swing around mm -hmm. and we would lower this item. Who wants to guess? What is this? It's a big contraption. What is it? This one's even bigger. It says 50 tons on it. These are jacks. When you have to change a tire on your car, you use a little a little jack about that big, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to change something on a steam locomotive, you need a big, big jack. 
the, 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 the handles are not to actually jack the, the, the lift up, the piston up, but to steer. We use this to steer them where they need to go. Mm -hmm. To actually make them work, I need a big hose like this, and mm -hmm. I couple it to the train line. The hundred pounds of air pressure mm -hmm. in the train line fit in here, and that's what I can't, I can't get the steamer <laughs> by hand. I use steam, I use air power to get those up. I'm going to leave this door open. It cools us off a little. Mm -hmm. Please don't fall out. Would that be okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who wants to go down and look at my favorite part of this car? Do you want to go down and look in this first doorway? Go ahead. You go first. Proper for ladies to have a cigarette in public, so they gave him time to, to go inside. Wouldn't you like to travel across the country in your own private compartment? Wouldn't that be yeah. nice? Yes, I know I would. We've added bunk beds at this end. There are three triple bunk beds for our guys, our workers who don't want to go in town and get a, a motel on the weekend. They can stay here and get right back at, at sunup tomorrow morning and get back to work. Steel petitions, you're right. What's this the it's heavy, heavy, heavy. amazing. And that's the base really nice. Yeah. There are windows, yeah. pictures. This is history. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you think that way. We think so, too. Yeah. This is why it was right on the, on the train. This was the laboratory, one on each end of the car. It's pretty spartan, but it's larger than what you get on an airliner. Yeah. It, it, it does the job for you. We are going to step out on the vestibule. Okay. The conductor could uh, open this trap door, and below it are set steps. You can see we haven't been out here in two weeks. Right, you can see right. somebody else is That's making okay. a home here. But this trap door will come up, the door will open, the trap comes up, and the steps will lead you down. So when you're out, uh, out of town on a low platform, you can step down, or in the city, you can walk straight across onto a platform. Directly below where you're standing are the couplers. Each car is coupled. If you have model trains at home, you know that the couplers really make that go cross-eyed, right? They're the <laughs> hardest part to fix yeah. on the whole train. Well, you're standing right above them because we are walking between two separate cars. Mm -hmm. This facing is actually a diaphragm. It keeps some of the weather. Notice the yeah, canvas okay. keeps the weather off you from walking through. We are going to walk from 1912, this uh -huh. blue car, to 1949, the stainless steel uh -huh. car. Caboose Mikey. Right, thank you very much. This is take two. Okay. Does that feel a little better with a little air? Yeah, I know. This part, this part is the dining room. If you were hungry on your on your trip, and this was an FEC car, you'd come in here. The, there were six men worked on the car. Two men would work on this end. Two stewards would seat you. There was a board at table here. There'd be two chairs. One where you're standing. I'm standing. And on this side, instead of the traditional four around, they went with two, a very artsy, uh, art depot type. There were decorations, there were vase with flowers, there were pictures. That end of the car had an oil painting on it. When we got the car, we went out of service from Amtrak in 1989, they piled all, everything, right where you're standing, a big heap in the car. They were going to rebuild the car. And when they found out how much it cost, they went, oh no. When we got it, we had to take all the heap apart, try to put the cushions back. Little by little, we're looking for somebody who knows upholstery and can do cushion work, right. and we'll work on that now. This car is very different. Notice the ceiling is so different. There are full length fluorescent lights, there are miles of wiring in here, and there's air conditioning on this car. It's not working right now, but very, very different from 1912 until 1960. Right. Well, where is the kitchen? I bet it's down there. Let's take a look and see if we can go. Again, you're on a concrete floor. You can see Main the line ribs. right over there. The floor has been decked over with plywood, so I'm going to ask you please take your time and just take a look around. Everything is stainless. All stainless fittings, oh, everywhere with doors on everything. Big, thick, heavy duty ice boxes here behind you. Look how thick the insulation is. So thick everything. Yeah. Everything's got air conditioning, vents, and, and freezer motors.
There's a deep freezer behind you, an ice maker, so they were self-contained. They could get you a drink, something cold, get you seated with a menu, and then they could come in here and tell our guys in the kitchen. Now, if you think it's hot now, imagine when they were cooking in here. The juniorist guy, the sixth man of the crew, worked here. He was the dishwasher. This was his station. First thing he had to do was rinse the dishes, scrub the dishes, and when he had the glasses finished and the plates, he would put them on this rack. So please watch your head oh, well, duck you underneath the rack. <laughs> feel tall. Yes, duck underneath. The servers could come in. There would be a plate right across and divide the pantry, which we're in now, from the kitchen. And this plate, of course, would have four plates at a time. The four plate people at each table, they would get the plate, they would fill it with the food they were going to have, they would prepare it. Uh, the very last thing, we have steam behind here, steam. This is a bun warmer. A little bit of buns, and they will put a bun on the very last mm -hmm. thing on your, on your plate. All the compartments above all have sliding doors so that nothing would bounce and fall out on you. There's 40 gallons of cold water above you, and on this wow. side, 40 gallons of hot water. Don't waste any space. <laughs> no, nothing is wasted. Please watch head as we duck underneath. More safe. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. room for the kids. You can see some lights. The lights really are very spartan. Uh, not very much at all, especially uh, at night in the dark. And ventilation. The fresh air you got. This was it. This was all that we had. <laughs> There's a blower up here on this end, but it didn't do very much. I guess not. Two men worked at this end, and they were the senior men of the crew, the chefs. They wore big, floppy white hats and white hats, and <laughs> puppies all down. One worked on this hot grill, one worked on this full stove. They are not electric, they are not propane, they are not gas. They had to take hickory logs and make their fire before they could start cooking. So if you think it's hot now, boy, wait till we get all the... It's not charcoal, it's actually hickory logs they would fill the fire. Yes, now, tell them how they wash their hands. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so at that far end of the car, we use a Pullman sink and it's tucked around that divider. We'll see it on the way around. So, two men working here to prepare meals. Deep freezers here behind you. They would equip whatever you wrote on your, on your, the, your steward wrote mm -hmm. down you were going to have for, for dinner. They would get that out, prepare it. I boxed you in the head, I'm sorry. And prepare it here. And everything would work that way out of the car. When we got to the end of the line, mm -hmm. they would get the door open and they would unload the things that need to go off, the soil linens and the empties, and load fresh supplies. Mm -hmm. There's another door on opposite on the opposite side, so whichever way the car was oriented mm -hmm. at its terminal, they, it would be very fast, very short amount of time for turnaround. The very first thing, they would come in with a pressure hose, and they would hose everything, high-pressure steam, wow. mm -hmm. to clean it. There are scuppers in the floor underneath the plywood, and everything would run down, flow down, and flow out onto the tracks, right out of the car, and that's how everything stayed clean. So, wow. it's a restaurant. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll bet. They would have loved to have a microwave back then. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we have pictures of the senior chef in his big floppy white hat standing here, and the junior is dishwasher down trying to get below his elbow, hanging on that bar, trying to get some fresh air, because really, I, I oh, know I it had to have been sweating. Let's go around this way. Instead of going back, we'll take you around, and we'll show you we won't let all the passengers in right through our kitchen. We'll show you how we've moved the hallway over to the side of the car, maximize the room for the kitchen, and still have room for hallway. Please watch your step. We've got everything kind of covered in plywood. It is safe, but please take your time. And this is the hallway. At 79 miles an hour, you'd be rocking along. And when somebody came the other way with a cup of coffee, you didn't want them to spill it. That's right. Exactly right. <laughs> Again, there's a bar. You can feel, come on, come closer. You can feel a little bit of breeze. Mm -hmm suck right in. Anything feels better right now. I, there you I have the switch hot. line and over across you have the main line. Which you would see